My name is David Kretz. I'm uh, nowadays 20 years, uh, 28 years old. Uh, I'm German, half German, half Italian. Uh, I started to study in Monaco in 2012, started with the Bachelor in Communications and Marketing um, and uh, shortly after did also half a year uh, in the UK as a study abroad and in 2015 I uh, started my Masters in Luxury Management for Goods and Services uh, and finished that uh, respectively in 2016. I did a bit of a mix because I thought it was important to to you know, see also university from several perspectives, uh, perspectives, and not only from uh, from kind of the Monaco bubble kind of perspective, but you know, get an idea of what's what else is out there. How are other students? And I thought the best place would be London for that because it's such a centralized place uh, for millions of students. Um, so yeah, just decided to prove myself over there quickly. And after half a year in London, while I still worked for football clubs in London next to it, so I had the, the honor to live with a football player that used to uh, play for Chelsea. And um, so I got a bit of an insight into the sports business kind of world because I wasn't sure back then of what I wanted. That's why I kept it rather broad in my, in my studies with just business, you know, so I could choose my path a bit later on. In Monaco, you you're just surrounded day in day out uh, with luxury, with the people. I think it's the it's the most I would almost call it the the, the capital of luxury because everything is so centralized. It's such a small place, so you get confronted with this on a day to day basis. So when you when you take the bus to school, 24 hours pass by. You know, in other cities, it's Volkswagen or Opel or whatever. You know, nothing nothing too crazy, but in in Monaco, it's just a completely different vibe. You pass on your way to university, at least many of the students pass the, the port of Monaco. You see all those multi-million billion uh, dollar houses and yachts and it's just, you are surrounded by pure luxury. Um, so I, I guess because you have so many touching points with it in, in your day-to-day -day basis from Monday to Sunday, that it's almost almost you know kind of an essential to to enter the luxury market after because you get triggered by it you see what's out there you see the money the potential and uh, that was for me the trigger point to get closer into that into that kind of society get a better idea of it and um, yeah now selling private jets <laughs> especially in the luxury goods and services program that I have done, it's kept rather broad. So you get a sneak peek into so many different industries um, and it triggers a bit of your interest because I guess everyone that is joining has an interest for one or the other thing. But nobody really knows if this would also be something for them in a professional environment. So during our master's studies, we got an insight into the fashion industry, into the jewelry industry. So we looked at a lot at watches and uh, prime jewelry, uh, fashion, of course. Uh, yachting was obviously due to the Monaco Yacht Show and the program now that IUM offers. Uh, the luxury car industry. So you got such a great idea of the different markets. And me being an aviation nerd my entire life, I wasn't even sure that there is a private jet market really there. But coming to Monaco, I always flew to Monaco. So you end up at Nice Airport and on the way, when, when you land with your commercial aircraft, you see at least three times the amount of private jets sitting there, you know? So I was like, wow, that, that, that seems to be a big market, you know, especially around the Côte d'Azur. So um, yeah, I, I pushed myself at the end a bit towards it, but IUM helped me to find out what's really my thing, because I was extremely, extremely stubborn on um, focusing on, on the luxury automotive industry. Um, and nowadays, I love driving cars, but I would not work anymore in that industry. So now I have way more interest in, interest in watches or, or private jets. So um, in that sense, IUM helped me actually a ton because I didn't focus in university of what I would want to do, but I found out what I don't want to do anymore. And I think that's as, as equally as, as important. It, Monaco per se is a, is a bit of an intimidating place. So one, you need to differentiate. You need to really understand you're a student there. You're not there just, um, you know, 
you don't normally you don't live the life of the people around you in Monaco. So you need to understand you're there for a student as, as a student. And um, in IUM, I mean, you, you have so many talented people around you, so many people with such a great understanding of what's going on, of a great mindset, because everyone is naturally very open minded. But I think to really make an impact, to really leave a mark, um, I guess I guess you just have to go above and beyond, you know, get out of your comfort zone under, try and understand people that you usually never dealt with. Try and understand all the different nationalities that you deal with on a day to day basis, because this is the luxury market nowadays. It is as international as it could get. And um, so it is really trying to go above and beyond. I know that's a very atypical or a typical saying to it, but I, I think it is pushing your limits, push your comfort zone, you know, get out of, out of the box and um, really give it all. I always say university is crunch time, uh, school, you can make mistakes, but university is crunch time because after you enter your job and yeah, that sets the footstep for, for a long path. I remember I had a, I had a, I, had, I think two or three girls in my class that came actually from Monaco. Um, but it was extremely limited. So you have, in my master's class, let's say, they were, we had a, a group of Indians, we had a group of Americans, a group of Canadians. Um, but I, I would have to think if I even had a Monegasque student sitting next to me. So maybe one or two, but it is not that usual, I would say. So you have people from not too far away. So let's say Italy, uh, so relatively close to the to the border of Monaco. Um, but um, yeah, it's so diverse. There is literally everyone there. I mean, we had we had some Japanese people there. Um, yeah, Americans, Canadians. It was all a, a great mix because everyone has a different perspective. So it was great to share thoughts and obviously the people that came from or come from Monaco who were in class were able to give completely different insight than everyone who joined Monaco because they knew it from growing up. They knew how the vibe is in that in that town, city, whatever you want to call it. Um, and everyone else just joined it and tried to understand how things are working out there. The masters give you an idea of what the market has to offer. It, it broadens up your mind of the actual potential in it. Uh, when I get nowadays asked what I've studied it, and I tell them that I've done the luxury man management masters in Monaco, everyone is a bit surprised because nobody is really aware of the, of the financial opportunities that are in that segment. So I think it is one of the most profitable segments. Obviously it's the luxury segment, the, the, the attention to detail, you know, because when when before I started to study and I looked at a luxury product, let's let's take it easy, a luxury car. I was like, okay, that's a nice car. That's it. But the personalization on that car that makes it suddenly a luxury thing because it becomes a unique product. And I see it nowadays with my with my business that I'm working on in private jets. It's not about the private jet that person B had as well, but it's about the personalized product. They want their initials stitched in on the seats of a private jet. They want their name uh, in, in Chrome outside of a private jet. So it's it becomes luxury, redefines in itself in the luxury segment. And that's something I was never aware of. For me, a luxury product was before, if you wear a fancy watch, if you drive a fancy car, if you can afford a private jet, for me, that was that was luxury. But luxury started to redefine themselves within the luxury sector. And that is something that I only got taught in Monaco. And um, it, same with jewelry. I knew nothing about jewelry before. And I was surprised what a market it is. And um, yeah, with the, how much marketing plays a role in it. So yeah, I thought I, would, I knew the luxury market relatively well uh, before doing the master, but um, yeah. Things get con constantly redefined. It's such a fast moving market. And yeah, the, the, the studies really gave me a great perspective on it and see it from different from different side as well. Monaco and the master studies in luxury management kind of speaks for itself. So I, I feel like it's always such an accelerator in putting your name out there because on every CV, everyone has some interest. Okay, I need to talk to that person. 
needless if we take them or, or, or not, just to understand why. Um, and that puts you so so nicely out there. And the, the entire career department pushed us very early onwards to take care of our things because you take care of either an internship or a um, or a yeah, fixed contract job right after your studies because you need it in order to finalize your master's. I decided to go for a fixed contract job right after my studies. They supported me in terms of the documents that are required for that, how my CV needs to look like. So it was a complete structure of yeah my CV presentation, LinkedIn presentation. Um, just, I mean, that's the first impression that people get of you and that needs to be extremely sleek and must work well. Um, and then when I got an idea of the company that I could potentially work for, um, got my first kind of interview uh, invites in. They supported me in terms of the prep, how I need to act in front of a uh, interviewee and uh, the questions that they potentially asked me. So, you know, we did like mock interviews um, and they were always by my side in order to support and guide me through the process. One thing that I learned very quickly, and I understood that in our in our classes already, the luxury market is so demanding. So the faster your way, the, you can make your way up so fast. Things can accelerate extremely fast. You can be amazingly successful. The product can work extremely well. But at the same time, as the market is so demanding, you can fall very fast and very hard, and it can hurt a lot. And that's something I've been warned uh, about several times. Uh, we discussed it through several times how different companies do that kind of thing as well and how they have been facing it. I mean, there are luxury markets back then that, you know, I used to know, used to be known as the founder of luxury and they don't really exist anymore. You know, they don't have such a great standing on the market anymore because they've been living on such a pride. And in my job, it's the same thing. So if I would have ignored that, guidance or that potential pit or that pitfall that could happen in our industry i would have been probably like one of my other colleagues who's been extremely successful everything running extremely well but he thought it's a self-running system at some point so he stopped putting an effort into it stopped putting an effort into understanding his client a bit better and then uh, yeah he had to he had to leave the industry because simply there was no business coming back to him and but if you continue to grow, if you continue to go with time, understanding your clients, understanding their religion, you know, that becomes such an important thing, then uh, I, don't, I don't think there are many ways to fail. But you always need to be on top of your game. There is no time to rest because the market doesn't rest. I, I think it sometimes faced me with a lot of, in terms of my own personality, with a lot of negatives as well. Um, I believe at least. Um, but one, I understood my strength way better. Um, I understood um, that I'm the type, I'm a communicator. I, I do my business while talking. I'm not, I can write an email, but it would take me ages. I know I get my business done by talking. And I am emphasized on that. So we, I had a lot of presentations, uh, gave speeches in front of, a, in, in front of uh, people in the university, in front of business people. So, on that, they really pushed me. But on the other hand, I noticed that I'm someone that is extremely stubborn <laughs> as well. And that's something they have, like they put a mirror, you know, up there and said, David, you know, you gotta be careful. This can be painful if you don't get your temper and uh, everything a bit under control. So I guess that's my half Italian coming out next to my German, you know. With my German, I'm extremely organized and very well structured and very calm. But my Italian side is very full of temperament. And that sometimes comes out. And that is what I had to go through in university as well. But once again, I think, yeah, it showed me something, let's call it negative on me, but thankfully IUM showed it to me because if I would have not been aware of it, I think it could have put a knife into the back, into my back in, in, in my business world because I may would have not realized. So um, yeah, something negative in the beginning, but I'm extremely thankful at the end. So it turns out to be something extremely positive. My goal is eventually, I'm, I'm still extremely young, but I found out in university that my eventual goal must be to reinvent the luxury private jet market. 
there is a ton of competition out there. The market is extremely, there is so much supply um, and often, I guess, a bit less demand than there is supply. And I found out that for me, I want to redefine that market. I want to change that market in the long run. It is difficult because it is a massive market. There are so many different factors that play a role in it, but I can see, I want to see myself changing that. And why do I do it? Because I love the personal contact to the people that I talk to day in, day out. I don't talk to, um, let's say, normal people. You know, I talk day in, day out to C-level executives of massive companies, of Fortune 500 companies. Of the, I talked, I guess, to every front office already of the biggest 30 German companies. And I do that every day. And you, you get to know those people in a very, very private uh, scenario as well, because they, yes, use me for their business use of getting from A to B. But only last week, I picked up the young daughter of a biggest Ger one of the biggest German private banks up because she got stuck. And it was, I don't know why, but it got such a family drama. So I organized everything in the background um to pick the daughter up and get everything completely fixed and it was a six hour flight landed in the middle of the night in germany but we got it done and seeing how human those ceos suddenly get and how emotional about those kind of so i i felt it must have been an extremely big deal for whatever reason but they've been so thankful you know they invite me to their birthdays i get invited to company parties because you become part of their business because you support their business to work well, uh, even in, in times of Corona. I've, uh, my job has been extremely busy because people still require what I do. And uh, that's what I love. The smile on people's face, I know it sounds very stereotyped, but making people happy, getting the job done and um, building a great relationship with those people. My, my advice would be enjoy one Monaco, you know, enjoy that you are at such a unique place. I sometimes wish, wake up in the morning, wish to be back there. Enjoy the program, enjoy the knowledge, the combined knowledge of your professors, of students that you get there from all over the world. Everyone has such a great impact. My advice is see it really as crunch time. Take everything that you can from that university because they have so much to offer so much combined knowledge and you may not really get it in the first moment but many things take a few days years months or whatever to understand and this is the case in that masses as well because it's it's i didn't i couldn't grab it a few years later i completely understand what they have been trying on doing so really focus put your best game on and and enjoy it because it is a unique experience and everyone that I studied with, we all wish we could go back and do it all over again. Even during times of Corona, you know, I think um, the university adapts so quickly to the new markets because the very wealthy remain or even got wealthier during Corona. And IUM is a university that, I, that identifies that, understands that and, you know, kind of I feel like they kind of create a new market in luxury just by identifying that, teaching their students that, and students then choose a path, maybe thanks to Corona even, you know? And uh, yeah, I can, once again, I've been doing it, I loved it, and I would do it all over again. <laughs>